Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads the Must Converse is the channel. And uh, I'm here today with a requested video. Scott from Shelfware is a new booktuber. Hot on the scene, raring to go, doing good videos. Um, he's, a, he's very much a sci-fi uh, fantasy kind of guy. As far as I can tell. But um, I'm liking it. Got some good feedback on my Philip K. Dick author spotlight video, and he asked for me to review The Divine Invasion. The Divine Invasion by Philip K. Dick. So, this is part of a trilogy, and I'm not going to go uh, too much into this whole concept because it is on my author spotlight video, and I'll just uh, link that. So, Philip K. Dick was always a very, you know, wild writer, and his 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 ideas and concepts are off the charts. There's a lot of, uh, you know, if, if you've seen Minority Report, there's a lot of ideas like that, precognition, psychic abilities uh, coming out in the human population just by a matter of 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 course, like evolution, evolutionary changes, um, that kind of thing. A lot of sci-fi elements, you know, do androids dream of electric sheep, is Blade Runner, uh, you know, the AI or a, you know, an artificial intelligence, how, how close, what, you know, what, where's the line between a, a thinking machine um, that is self-referential, can learn on its own and things, where would that, you know, how would the line blur between that and, and human beings, stuff like that. Uh, space and whatever. I mean, he's he's all over the map. I could just you know, kind of go all over. But he had a a, a a a wild experience later in his life where he had um, a completely you know foundational shaking experience of living information, the universe itself as living information. He said that he um, received a download and what seemed like hours and hours and hours of information streamed directly into his head without thought or concept. It was going so fast and so directly into his brain that he couldn't think about it or try to make sense of it at all. He just saw and, and received the information and then spent the rest of his life trying to make sense of it. Well, making sense of it, he, he termed um, what the underlying intelligence of the universe, like what is doing this kind of thing, as Valus, the vast active living intelligence system. And then he wrote um, a series of books of which Divine Invasion is one from the vantage point of that uh, understanding. This is an amazing work. I'm going to be very soft on the spoilers, maybe none at all. You know, I'm not a spoiler kind of guy. And I know that, uh, Scott, you seem like you're not one that, uh, you know, you're, you're not, you're, not you're, you're probably going to read it. So I'm just going to give you, you know, uh, a little quick synopsis kind of thing. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. And then I'm going to give you my take, you know, my, uh, you know, just really what I think about it. But from the back here, the divine invasion, Philip K. Dick asks, what if God or a being called Yah were alive and in exile on a distant planet? How could a second coming su succeed against the high technology and finely tuned rationalized evil of the modern police state? So this opens up on Mars. Mar, you know, a very, very loosely colonated. Everybody's in these kind of domes, and they're they're all separate from each other, but they can communicate um, between each other, and they get daily communication from Earth. They're very lonely out there, but they have the means to travel from one to the other. Uh, you know, little little dome, little living. Uh, dwelling. And so you open up and you meet your main character is uh, is is who we're going to follow the whole time. 
His name is Herb, Herb, Herb Asher is his name. And he actually um, has, ha, you know, God, God, you know, like Yah is God, like the God of the Christian, Christian scriptures. Um, this is not very, you know, theologically heavy at all. <laughs> Philip K. Dick was more into Gnosticism and more into, I mean, and Gnosticism wasn't even really um, out there, printed, um, and, you know, uh, widely available for him to, you know, kind of get into a lot or something like that. He's, you know, it's a, it's a very wild uh, view of God and who God is. But, um, so Yah actually just speaks direct. God is on Mars. God has been, you know, kicked off the earth. The earth belong, belongs to humanity and everything that comes along with our, um, our mind uh, and personalities and tendencies. So Yah speaks to her and says, you know, this, this woman's going to come over from the other dome. Y'all are going to have a relationship. You're going to impregnate her. Y'all are going to have a kid. And on the way to Earth, because no, no child is born on Mars, they go to Earth to be, um, to be born. On your way to Earth, you're going to be attacked. Your wife is going to die, but the child is going to live. And that child is going to be um, Christ uh, coming again. Is going to be my uh, coming back to earth is what it is. So, you know, it works out uh, very much like that. Elijah is a major character in this book. The immortal Elijah that has walked the earth ever since, you know, Old Testament times and will walk the earth until the end of time. He's a, he's a major character and the the boy is the most uh, major character but like I said we're following in this high, entire book um, Herb Asher. So we, we're following a very human character as he also tries to you know navigate this this uh, cer this, this crazy um, thing that's happening to him. The boy uh, is is very special and is very smart and is raised by Elijah in a big way. The uh, powers that be on the earth are basically two. You have your you know religious uh, bureaucracy over the top bloated, you know, ultimately at its root evil, <laughs> you know, system of belief that is. Uh, having its influence over humanity at large. And then you have your corporate uh, entity, which is just this huge, overbearing, you know, uh, ego-driven, um, you know, corporate entity, basically. And the two leaders of that are, of course, uh, they're, they're just convinced that this uh, child that's coming... They, they get uh, catch wind of it, that this child that's coming is an alien, which he is, and is a demon, which to them, you know, is, is an antagonist of them. And so this, this child is pure evil and needs to be destroyed when, when actually, you know, it's very much the other way around. Uh, they're, they're, they're very, uh, you know, as you can ex expect from Philip K. Dick's stuff, they're very ineffective. You know, they're uh, they're so mired under the the never ending paperwork. And I think of something like Brazil. If you've seen that Terry Gilliam movie, Brazil, one of my favorites. I love Terry Gilliam. But uh, where just, you know, there's a the ministry of information and it's just room after room of just answer, asking asinine questions and and uh, putting, you know, documenting everything. And it's just, you know, nobody could ever get anything done when you need to get, get something, you know, you're just, you're mired in paperwork and paperwork and like, you know, takes you, uh, you know, a day, a week, a month 
to get something, you know, very uh, simple done, actually, or something. Um, it's a wild ride. The, the kind of uh, story that the boy goes through is something that I don't want to give much spoilers to, but there is a deviation. Um, when it comes down to it, you follow the father, Herb Asher, and then you follow the boy um, in two parallel or two different storylines, pretty much. Um, the boy is very much operating on a higher uh, spiritual level and acting in this world on a higher spiritual level. And it's not just, you know, one being that is God right there. Um, he is accompanied by a, a feminine aspect of God. Another girl that was born here on earth that is a, an actual uh, high level spiritual being as well. And they go uh, do some pretty amazing things. Uh, there's, it's a great story. It's a, it's great how uh, that works out, and it's especially great how Herb's story works out because um, there, there we see where our kind of spot is in reference to something like this kind of thing happening. And Philip K. Dick does it very well. It's, uh, it's probably my favorite Philip K. Dick fiction piece, to tell you the truth. And I read it right off the heels of Valus, um, the first book in the trilogy, Valus. Now, um, it's not, you don't need to read Valus first because it's a complete different story. You know, this is a fiction work in, in its own setting, in its own uh, kind of uh, world that uh, Philip K. Dick has built. And uh, Valus takes place very much in our world. You know, that's not, you know, the, the world at the, uh, you know, end of the 20th century in, in America. So Valus is, is totally different, but um, as far as this kind of wild Philip K. Dick ride, uh, it's, it's definitely in my top five. And as far as a story and how the storytelling and how it works out, it's obvious that here at the end of uh, Philip K. Dick's life, he was definitely much more in control of uh, his narrative. He was a better writer than he ever had been, which is, you know, not not saying all that much. Philip K. Dick was not some high level, you know, literature, high, high level writer, but um, his ideas are off the charts. So I hope you all you enjoyed that. Thank you, Scott, for the request. I'll leave a link to Scott's uh, channel down below. And anybody, uh, you know, any, any other uh, reviews you want to hear about of anything that I've touched on on any of my videos, feel free to request. I'll knock them out. Thank you. Bye, BookTube.